are hopelessly naive, but however much the Democrats and Joe Biden have done for organized labor, the Democrats could definitely lose in November. And Trump, who was sitting right across the hall from O'Brien up on stage performing, watching him closely with that martyred ear, he might be the guy I'll have to negotiate with. Zoe Chase, this is a producer on our show. Reminder, turn on your headlights. Show. Act two. Adam Lim. You know who July hasn't been so great for? The Democratic politicians who are out front before anybody, publicly calling for President Biden to drop out of the election. We have 260 Democrats who sit in the House and Senate. Only 21 step forward. 21 House representatives and one senator for the first three weeks after the presidential debate. The Democratic governors and the former presidents. But this small group called for Biden's dropout, hoping an army was going to form behind them. Then a week passed, and another week, and the battalions did not show up. They hung out there by themselves. Watch out. Construction on road ahead. Finally, at the end of this week, we heard about big names in the party. Pelosi, Schumer, Jeffries, behind the scenes, urging the president to step aside. With that cover, going into the weekend, the number of elected lawmakers started edging up very slowly. And finally, of course, Joe Biden bowed out of the race. But it took over three weeks for things to get to this point. So what was that like? The people who stuck their necks out and waited. Well, Congressman Seth Moulton agreed to talk to me about all that. He's a Democrat from Massachusetts, rising star in the party, said the presidential run himself in 2020. Former Marine, who served four tours in Iraq. In fact, he led a platoon in the first company to enter Baghdad. Years ago, uh, he did a memorable interview on a program. He had this interpreter who he worked with and got close to in Iraq. He ended up coming to the States and living in Moulton's childhood home with his parents. He basically became part of their family, awaiting to get asylum. Because of all the death threats against him for collaborating with Americans. Joe Biden took an interest in Seth Moulton back when Moulton first ran for Congress in 2014. Biden was vice president. Biden went to Massachusetts to do a rally endorsing him. And they were in a car together where Moulton says the vice president offered him half of his peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And he was not sure if you're supposed to say no to that offer from the vice president. So he said yes. Moulton's age and his military experience. Moulton says Biden's told him a few times he reminds him of his son, Bo. Moulton and I spoke this past Monday, July 15th. Tell me the story of turning his back on Joe Biden starts, of course, on debate night. Well, I think, like most Americans, I felt the debate was an unmitigated disaster for President Biden. I mean, we all remember the times he couldn't keep his train of thought. He lost his place. He seemed incoherent. I thought one of the most remarkable moments was when he literally took our best issue, abortion, and pivoted immediately to our worst issue, immigration. I mean, you almost couldn't make it up. I, I want to ask you a question that, that I worry might be a little awkward for you to answer, and I hope you can answer it honestly. The side of President Biden that we all saw on television that night during the debate, you're in D.C., you hear a lot of things, I'm sure. Had you seen that side of him before that night? Had you heard about that side of him before that night? Is that something people talk about? Yes. Yes, it is. I've seen the president fairly regularly as a member of Congress, although it does feel like his staff is hiding him far more than they used to. But I've seen a dramatic change in particular over the last several months. I saw him at the White House Christmas Ball, and he looked older and frailer, uh, but he was excited to see me, you know, quickly uh, recounted things we've done together or whatnot. Um, then I saw him most recently, just a few weeks ago, in Normandy for the 80th anniversary of D-Day. He was speaking with a small group of us, and the change was pretty dramatic. How so? Well, it's just, it, it was more like the things that we saw in the debate. Not that bad, but more in that direction. Like, like him having a hard time summoning the words for things. Yeah, more like that, yes. But as someone who's been a very long time Joe Biden fan, as someone who's admired him, as someone who's been a mentee of his, it, it, was, it was hard to see, and it was concerning. To the point where, although I don't think there's a single American who expected what we saw the night of that debate, I wasn't entirely surprised. So when we came back to the House floor the next day, everyone was sharing the same view. I didn't speak to anyone who thought it was okay, other than Speaker Pelosi, who just said, well, I don't know that we can judge a campaign by one debate. But I really felt she had to say that. Party leaders are in a little bit different position. But all of us in the rank and file thought it was a total disaster. And I think most of us were clear that the only way forward for Democrats to have a chance in this election is to get a new nominee at the top of the ticket. And within the next few days, Moulton says, he tried to call everybody he knew in the White House, anybody close to the inner circle, to express his concerns about the president's performance. The path ahead. I made a lot of phone calls, and I got nothing in response. Now, I'm not offended by that. I don't want to come across as you know, thinking that the White House should return my phone calls. But given the circumstances, you'd expect some low-level aide to just give me a call and say, we've heard your concerns. Here's what we're doing about them. Hmm. But it was just a wall of silence. What did that say to you? It said to me that they're not taking this seriously. Mm -hmm. We needed to hear a new plan. And first, you just simply need to hear that they're being honest about the situation at hand. But I wasn't hearing any of that. When I came home to Massachusetts, I held a Zoom meeting with a lot of local Democratic officials. And these are people who tend to be very establishment players. They want to stick with the status quo, by and large. Mm -hmm. So I expected the majority of them to be in favor of Biden remaining on the ticket. I'd say it was about 80% in favor of him stepping aside. Mm -hmm. That was powerful as well. Five days after the debate, before the first Democratic lawmaker calls for Biden to step down. A day later, the second one does. That same night, Moulton releases a very polite, pretty hedgy statement saying, 